he was telling us about pick a woman who can give you offspring and who is truthful. So I've been racking my brain. How can I tell if she can have babies? I mean, I can only look at her hands and her face, and I'm not a, a doctor by any means, but I played one on TV. But I can't. <laughs> How can I tell if she can have babies? When the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that, تزودوا الولود الولود and encouraged us to choose when who can bear children that can be recognized simply by looking into her family and sisters and her mom back sisters right. yeah no, back background mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. uh, in addition to being healthy so of course those apparent factors can help making a decision otherwise the fact whether a woman or a man can have children or not, this is in the knowledge of the unseen. Similarly, a man would uh, run some medical checkup to find out if he's capable to have children or not. Uh, I mean, it's a bit awkward to, to ask some, some woman that you're going to get married, so go and get yourself a medical check. I want to see whether you're clean before I marry you. Well, <laughs> no, not exactly <laughs> like that. But talking about, you know, uh, you know, there is a very serious thing, you know, that sometimes when uh, when when a couple have a certain blood group, like, you know, when the, when the female have the RH factor is negative and the male has the RH positive, that can cause uh, so many complications in the second and third pregnancy. The Prophet ﷺ says, لا ضرر ولا ضرر, you should not harm nor should you be harmed. Uh, and accordingly, he said that no one of you will become a perfect believer unless he loves for himself, for, for his brother, what he loves for himself. Mm -hmm. So if, if a person, for instance, is living with some chronic illnesses, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I should be honest with myself and with the person whom I'm proposing for, sharing the fact that I'm, I'm sick, I live with this illness. Maybe but she doesn't want to live with that, that illness also. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the girl. Uh, you know, unfortunately, some people uh, propose and they don't mind having some sexual transmitted diseases oh. and they don't uh, share this fact with their future uh, mates, mm. which is not fair. That's totally prohibited. I heard of a case where a sister in, uh, I think it was Kenya, got married but her husband gave her AIDS and he had it before they got married and she didn't tell him and she was asking if she could get a divorce because of it. It's, it's kind of too late. Anyway, too late, if, yeah. if a person doesn't know, that's different. But if a person knows, then he should be honest, mm -hmm. or she should be honest. You know, well, then it will be violated if you don't, you don't spell it out. What mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. it's violated. Yeah, absolutely. So your nikah is violated for that. Oh, well, it, it depends on the approval of uh, the other party. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if they agree to live with it. If it's something really uh, big, you know, would affect the life would affect having a husband and wife relationship mm -hmm. then it would be given the right even if it is for a woman to approve it or to disapprove it and then to be reversed inshallah, inshallah. well uh, what about the, the custom now that we are, we are with the women and married that we exchange rings things like that are there in a part of Islam Number one, I, I have come across with some people when I see them, even during Hajj, wearing a, a gold ring. Gold ring, yeah. And I say, uh, Sheikh, this is uh, prohibited. You know, the Prophet wants once saw one of his companions wearing a gold ring and said that, would you like to wrap a burning coal around your finger? Mm -hmm. So he said, no, and he threw it away. And the Prophet once held the gold and silk in one hand and said, these two, are, these two objects are prohibited for uh, the men of my ummah. Mm -hmm. but permissible for the women. Mm -hmm. So they say that uh, a person once said to me that, you know, if I ever take it off my finger, my wife would think that I don't like her anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't love her anymore. I'm pronouncing uh, the but, words. <laughs> but it was not the custom of the... Of Whether the it's Islam. gold or silver, it's that it's not a custom of oh, Islam, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly okay to wear a, a silver ring if you're a male, okay, mm -hmm. outside marriage. But to wear a ring, particularly as this is a sign of marriage, Same. it's not stated in Islam. However, everybody knows this is, uh, you know, taken ah, from tradition. another culture. Yeah. Mm. No, exactly, exactly. So, um, I, I remember to uh, discuss a very important thing, which is that happens sometimes, uh, uh, and it happened to two of my friends. They were two interested in the same girl, mm. and they both wanted to propose, but one of them was fasting. 
the Prophet ﷺ treated this situation by saying that, that no one should propose if he knows that somebody else is proposing for the same girl. Unless, what if you don't know? Oh, well, that's different. That's different. <laughs> that's different but if you know, <laughs> you should step back and wait. If they approve him and everything goes all right, then it's over. And if they don't and they refuse him, jump in. then you can jump in. You can go ahead and, and, and try. <laughs> you try your luck. Yeah. But otherwise, it's prohibited to compete. It's not an auction, though. Yeah. Didn't you oh, have a question yeah, on that? Uh, actually, uh, like for instance, I'm 24 years old. Like We, we all know because we've talked <laughs> about so that young. before. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. smells like Similac. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward, inshallah, for marriage. Uh, I always had this uh, idea of istikhara because istikhara, as the Sheikh uh, will say and clarify, it's a, it's a way that we, we ask Allah to choose for us uh, whatever uh, direction we want to take in life or, or, or choice. That's correct. And uh, therefore, I think, I believe it's, it's very important and it's a must to do that for, for in, my, in my situation before I get married, inshallah. So, Sheikh, what, what, what do you have to say about this? You know, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to teach us uh, istikhara, the prayer of istikhara, mm -hmm. consulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their affairs, as he would teach us a chapter of the Quran, a surah or a verse of the Quran. To the point that the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, one of them would uh, pray istikhara uh, prior to purchasing a pair of shoes, because Allah knows best. Uh, marriage is a big decision. Huge. It is. You know, Huge. Yeah, it is. And people tend to ask everybody, exactly. friends, people who knows the other party and so on, and they ignore the most knowledgeable one, <laughs> Allah, who knows best. Knows so consulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him to choose for you what's best by saying, Oh Allah, I ask you by your knowledge, by your power of knowing the unseen. Mm -hmm. Since you know and I don't know, I know nothing. Mm -hmm. So if you know that proposing or getting married to this girl, to this boy, is good for me, for my religion, for this dunya and for the hereafter to so make it easy for me. And if not, then take me away from it and keep it away from me and give me better than that. So whatever Allah would choose for you is best for you. So after making all the efforts, trying to make the right choice and keeping in mind a particular girl, don't propose before making istikhara. What about uh, love? How love play part in that? You know, is it love come first or someone decide because you get married and then it comes with the, uh, your marriage? You know, Ahmed, really, <laughs> through experience, uh, the real love is that which grows within the marriage within life. Within the marriage life, yeah. mm -hmm. When a person observes the previous factors of choosing the life mate, which we discussed, and puts on top the religious commitment, the good manners and morals, definitely love would come as a natural result of all of that, which would lead to a happy life. Mm -hmm. You know, once a man came to the Prophet wasallam and said uh, that I was raising an orphan girl. Now two people are proposing for her. One of them is rich, whom we like. Of course. <laughs> and one is extremely poor. He has nothing. But she likes him. So the Prophet ﷺ said Salaam. that there is no better remedy, a treatment for love, better than marriage. If she likes that person, you know, and we're talking about uh, the, the, the pure love, yeah. without a relationship, without dating, without, you know, having chatting on the internet for uh, hours love and days, the first look. you know, mm -hmm. hearing about a person with good qualities, you know, uh, seeing good morals of a person, so you like the person. So the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, he gave a priority to the person whom the girl likes. 
And once Sayyiduna Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, whom do you love the most? He said, and what do you ask? He said, uh, just to know. He said, uh, Aisha. <laughs> so Amr ibn al-As actually was not asking about, uh, you know, women. He was asking about yeah. the Prophet's yeah. companions. Yeah. Okay. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, mentioned whom he loved he loves the most of those who are alive. Her father. <laughs> so he said, Aisha, she said, no, 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 I'm talking about men. So the Prophet ﷺ said, her father. <laughs> so love is a fact and is a reality, which Islam as a religion does not ignore, but treats it in the proper manner. You know, in Surah Yusuf, it tells us about how uh, uh, the Aziz wife was interested in Yusuf. And when the rich woman of the high society blamed her and so on, she prepared a feast for them and she asked Yusuf to uh, cross in front of them yeah. where they cut their hands. They couldn't believe that he's, uh, and they said, oh, you know, you know what, you're not blameworthy anymore. Mm. Yeah. Well, he deserves to be loved. And said he had half the beauty, Yusuf had half the beauty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in, in, in this uh, case, love is a fact, is a reality. But as long as it is within the boundaries of halal, and it can be concluded in a proper manner, which is marriage, then it's accepted. Mm. But allowing oneself to read novels, have puppy and, love, and, and, you know, <laughs> that you're getting <laughs> into a very dangerous area. I think that's a fictional love, like what we read. It's, it's not true. Well, what you when mean? it comes to reality, it's really fictional. Yeah, what you read and, and you see in the, in, the, in the movies, in the romance movies, that has nothing to do with love. That's, a, that's a, obviously a romanticized version of what, of what love is. Um, I'm going to run in and grab us a couple sandwiches. You know what a sandwich is? It's a, it's a really big sandwich. <laughs> so inshallah, I'll be back in a, in a couple of minutes with those sandwiches. Okay, it's just like a lot of It's just like a lot We're looking at the names of Allah from the perspective of not only their understanding, knowing what they are, know what they, knowing what they mean, but also looking at how they should impact on our lives. We should gain from it a sense of Allah, the vastness of Allah's mercy, how it encompasses every aspect of His creation. Al-Malik, Al-Malik, and Al-Malik. Al-Malik translated as the Sovereign Lord, Al-Malik, the Owner, and Al-Malik, the King, in the names of Allah. Allah is the only guide, when your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall. Remember, just remember, Allah sees it all. <laughs> The hadith that you just mentioned uh, about the, the, the woman having, uh, she has she has rights to say no. <laughs> you just can't go say I'm marrying this woman and she can't say no. Absolutely. You know, what the problem is really that we mix and confuse the issues. We confuse what's religious and what's cultural. But when we study our religion and understand it perfectly, we know that it was the first to give rights to everybody. Not only to men, not only to women, but to everybody, even to animals. Exactly. So in this hadith, it shows that the approval of the girl was necessary for the approval of the marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lady came to the Prophet ﷺ and said that, Ya Rasulullah, my father married me without my will. Yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ reversed her marriage. And another girl came once to the Prophet ﷺ and said that, Ya Rasulullah, uh, my father married me to his nephew for a reason or another and she did not approve that match so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave her the choice if she wants to approve it or if she wants to reverse it it will be void so she said well I will approve what my father did so what was the purpose of your coming and complaining she said I only wanted to give a message to women that that no one can force them 
to marry without their approval, without their permission. Well, well this is uh, for the girl who was not married before. What about a girl who already married? Does Either she way. still need a approval? Either way, because the Prophet وسلم, said, لا تنكح الأي حتى تستأمر ولا تنكح البكر حتى تستأذن. And it's very interesting that the Prophet ﷺ showed us the sign as how uh, a girl who have never been married before would show uh, an approval, yes or no. He said that for a bikr, for a girl who have never been married, إذنها سكوتها. So whenever the guardian would ask her, would you accept such and such to marry you? So if she doesn't say anything, that's a sign of approval. Saying means, yes. yes. she like it. You know, I mean, she like it. You know, and this is a sign of haya and shyness and modesty. She didn't like him. She let you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keeping balance between this and the opinion and the approval of the wali, the guardian, because it was reported that the Prophet sallallahu says that la nikaha illa bi wali. There is no valid marriage without the approval of the guardian. So if we have both. The approval of the wali and the approval of the girl. And we have the standard of measures, which we have discussed earlier, as on top religion. religious commitment. Mm -hmm. Well, my question again is that we're talking about the permission of the uh, girls to say that he wants to get married, right? But on the terms of this, the wali also has to agree to get married. To Correct. Get. Now, what if this girl has already been married and she's divorcee? And she, she now want to get married. Does she has to get the wali to approve again, or she can just approve? even if she's divorced, the approval of the wali is necessary mm -hmm. for the validity of her marriage, even if she has been married before. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. The wali plays a very important role. It's not just to sit home wait for somebody to propose to his daughter and ask for her hand. No, mm -hmm. the wali would also look around maybe. And he will find, find uh, you know, a righteous person, a young man who's having the qualities which he would assume that he could be a good candidate for his daughter. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong at all with asking him and proposing to him and asking him and offering him to marry uh, his daughter. Mm -hmm. I actually find that quite flattering if someone came to me and said, hey, I think you're a pretty decent guy, why don't you come over and, and meet my daughter? If you live in a, in a true Muslim society, that would be very, very often happening. Mm -hmm. Why? You have Khadija, mm -hmm. may Allah be pleased with her. She proposed to the Prophet ﷺ and she mm -hmm. was a woman. Mm -hmm. In the presence of the companions, once a lady came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, I want to marry you. She gave herself to the Prophet ﷺ. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet ﷺ looked at her. Because he was inspecting the lady, and then he changed his mind, and he didn't say anything, not to embarrass her. Then another companion popped up and said, Ya Rasulullah, since you're not interested, uh, I would like to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ said, well, uh, he notices that the lady did not disapprove that. She didn't mind. So she wanted to get married. <laughs> So I said, um, what do you have? He said, uh, as a mean of dowry, he said, I don't have anything other than my izar, which is, you know, a sheep to be wrapped right around the waist. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said, uh, well, if you give it to her, you'll be without izar. <laughs> Look around, maybe you can find even uh, uh, an iron ring. He said, I can't. I don't have any. So the Prophet ﷺ said, well, uh, did he memorize anything of the Qur'an? So he mentioned that he had memorized such and such surah and such and such surah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I'll marry you to her with whatever you have memorized in the, of the Qur'an. So that the Qur'an was a dowry in this case to teach her whatever he memorized of the Qur'an. You know? The approval of the wali is necessary. Mm -hmm. The approval of the girl is necessary. And a wali may propose to somebody whom he assumes that he could be a good candidate for his daughter. How come it was so much her. easier for the, the Sahaba and the, and the earlier generations to get married than it is for the, 
the later generations because they were closer to the to the, the message if we go back to religion things will become easy if we go back to the practices of Prophet Muhammad sallam, in his first generation, the companions, things will be wonderful. There, Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, once offered Uthman ibn Affan to marry his daughter Hafsa. He said, yeah, Uthman, if you're interested in Hafsa, I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> so Uthman said, let me think about it. Then a few days later, Umar once again offered him and proposed to him. Mm -hmm. But he said, you know what, yeah, Umar, uh, uh, I'm thinking that I'm not going to get married. Actually, that was after uh, Uthman lost his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, the daughter of the Prophet. Sorry. Naam, the daughter yeah. of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ruqayya. And everybody wanted to compliment him and to take him out of this sorrow and sadness. So Umar ibn Khattab went to Abu Bakr Siddiq and said, uh, he offered him Hafsa, if you want to marry to Hafsa. So Abu Bakr Siddiq did not answer at all. And that's why Umar was kind of upset with Abu Bakr, because he didn't give him any answer. At least Uthman did answer. A few days later, the Prophet ﷺ came and proposed to Hafsa. <laughs> and Umar was extremely happy. Now his daughter is the wife of the Prophet, Prophet ﷺ. ﷺ. So Abu Bakr came to him and said, uh, Ya Umar, do you remember the day when you offered me Hafsa? He said, yes. He said, probably you got mad at me and you were upset. He said, yes. He said, let me tell you this. I have heard the Prophet ﷺ mentioning Hafsa. So I figured out that he was interested in her. So I didn't want to reveal the secret of the Prophet ﷺ. It was as simple as that. The Quran relates to us that the story of Sayyidina Musa ﷺ, huh? with this uh, uh, rich man, the father of the two girls who said to him, إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُنْكِحَكَ إِحْدَ بْنَتَيَّ هَاتَيْنِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تَأْجُرَنِي ثَمَانِيَ حِجَجٍ فَإِنْ أَتْمَمْتَ عَشْرًا فَمِنْ عِنْدِكَ It was actually the man who offered Musa عليه السلام to marry to his own daughter. You know? But based on what? Musa was extremely poor. He had no house, he had no food, he had nothing. So he offered him housing, a wife, and a job. Why all of that? Of his character. Because of his honesty oh. and his strength. Strength of Iman, strength of power. That's why when his daughter said to him, Ya Abad Istajr, Dad, hire him. The best one to hire is Al Qawiyul Amin. He's strong and he's honest <laughs> and trustworthy. So it was very much accepted. Why not nowadays if I think that uh, Abdul Rahman is a good person mm -hmm. and I have a girl at marriageable age that I discuss with my daughter and I offer her. And if she approves him, why not I can talk to him? I can propose to him my own daughter, mm -hmm. my own sister. Nothing wrong with that. Well, Sheikh, I, I had this question that just popped in my mind, is that uh, back in the days I heard this hadith, I'm not sure, I heard it from people, from Allah Alam. I heard that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, and the meaning of the hadith is that we should, we should make the wife live the life that she had with her parents were almost the same, like make her live in the approximately the same same life of, the, of her social social class that she used to have. So, you know, Ya Abdul Rahman, once a man used to serve the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam liked him. And this man was extremely poor. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once offered him, won't you get married? He said, uh, no Ya Rasulullah, I would rather serve you. Basically, he didn't have any means of getting married. So once again, the Prophet ﷺ offered him, won't you get married? So he said, you know what? If the Prophet ﷺ offers me for the third time, I would definitely accept the offer. Which the Prophet ﷺ did offer him for the third time. So the man said, Ya Rasulullah, who would accept me? You know, as a husband of their daughter, of their girl. 
who was so the there. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah. <laughs> so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent him and said, go to such and such house and tell them that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants me to marry to your daughter. So he did. But they objected that he didn't have any means. He was extremely poor. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged his companions to collect fund for him, which they did to the point that they fixed him a feast, a walima, and they celebrated together the feast of his wedding. So, when it comes to wealth, it should not be considered as a determining factor. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِن يَكُونُوا اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ If there be poor, Allah will enrich them out of his bounty. And you can see too, the, the Sahaba didn't think that way. When Omar ibn Khattab, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, married his son to the daughter of a milkmaid. Exactly. Because of her honesty. You have a good memory, Ismail, mashallah. <laughs> no, no. So, um, I would say I have to go somewhere. But inshallah, hopefully, we'll be able to meet you tomorrow. Inshallah. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, meeting with you. Thank you, Ismail, for inviting us. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ulaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.